what are those things that you begin to do as your scope increases? So, um, and that's a really good question. Mm. Because when we come from uni, mm -hmm. I think there are times when students have this attitude and mm. sort of like had a chance to work with a few. Mm. I know it all. Mm. So you give them a job like taking phone calls mm -hmm. to organize meetings and they feel that is below them. Mm. But you don't realize that that's part of what is growing you, mm. you know, to become who you eventually will. Right. Because it is in, in making this phone call, so mm -hmm. I would make phone calls mm -hmm. to organize for meetings. Mm -hmm. So we would have, um, let's say, like we are organizing the dissemination of the kind of work. We have a list of who yeah. have everything organized, the contact list mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all that. Put mm -hmm. together, let's say, 100 people mm -hmm. and spend days just talking mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. And you recognize that sometimes you'll catch someone on a bad day. Mm -hmm. And so they are really impatient with mm -hmm. you on the other side. Mm -hmm. but you know, you are building your capacity mm -hmm. to negotiate mm -hmm. and to deal with people. Mm -hmm. And, and, and usually when, mm. when you speak with people on phone, mm. when they come to the meeting, mm. they say, I spoke to so-and-so, where is she? Mm. So they begin to put a face mm. to a name. Mm. And those are networks you're building mm. even without knowing, mm. right? And so when somebody says, I can't, it's beneath me to make calls, mm. you're shooting yourself in the in the foot. Mm. So there was organizing meetings, there was mm. writing minutes, mm. writing reports mm -hmm. after after meetings mm. and so again you're increasing your capacity mm. to analyze because you mm. can do the verbatim thing mm. but to what extent do you make sense of that report mm. and that really did take time mm. that that analyzing and putting in a report that is not verbatim mm. did take time so those are things mm. that she mentored me to do because mm. she was a very good communications person mm. Mm. proofreading mm. Um, material Document, yeah so that took a lot mm. because remember i'm not an economist mm. so i'm i'm really coming in in this world and i'm discussing something i've never discussed before mm. something about the future mm. and it was a daunting task mm. but it then begins to help mm. me to get into the world of research mm. and you know mm. analysis and mm. writing mm. even mm. Mm. Uh, reading people's papers mm. made me so good at mm. understanding different topics mm. So that later in life, mm. I, when I became a researcher and I do that for a living, mm. it was so easy. And, and even when you make presentations, mm. you really sound clever because mm. you have this kind of information mm. um, that other people are not predisposed to unless mm. they read those reports. Mm. Mm. So th that that really expanded mm. Um, mm. me. Mm. The other big one. Mm. So at this point in time, we were now beginning to take this work out. Mm. And Angie would just tell me, okay, mm. so we were going and mm. she's the one who's to present and mm. she says, now you've seen me four times present, mm. Mm. go and present. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. Mm. I remember the first time, in fact, at some point, I think Angie, in one of the meetings she was supposed to present and she wasn't able to come. Mm. And I'm going with my boss and just last minute, I remember it was the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Mm. My boss decides you present, you've been doing this with Angie. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. I, I was so nervous, mm. but you know, because I had had the opportunity mm. to hear and to, to learn mm. and to watch, mm. I did it. Mm. I got a standing ovation, so I was oh, a bit wow. confused. I, I, I thought they were walking out on me, <laughs> but my boss mm. was very gracious to mm. be able to answer the questions because I wasn't mm. able to as eloquently as she had, mm. also partly because she had been part of the process. Mm. But that, you know, allowed me then as we were going back to the office, she would tell me, oh, for this slide, it's mm. better to say it this way mm. and that way. Mm. So mm. that grace, that mm. mentoring, mm. I ended up then doing 360 workshops around the country. Mm -hmm. Still as a program now assistant. Now as an assistant program officer. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But still. Yeah. It's it was, part of the growth, yeah. Yes, it was mm. part of growth, mm. but it, it was wonderful. Mm. 360 because workshops? 360, every corner of this country. Wow. And what was most amazing is, mm. of course, you've had that mm. in this journey, mm. I had never gone anywhere. Mm. Mm. I mean, apart from Belgium mm. and Kitui mm. <laughs> to mm. visit my grandmother, mm. Mm. I didn't know anywhere else. Mm. So it was an opportunity for me to get to know mm. different parts of the country. Mm. Mm. One of the most fascinating mm was a, a workshop we were mm. supposed to do in Moyale. Mm. If we remember our geography, Moyale is at the border of Ethiopia. Yeah. yeah. And those days that road from Isiolo was not tarmacked. Oh my goodness. So that was a three day journey. But we were supposed to take a mirror flight. Mm. And somehow, because it's an informal arrangement, mm. it just didn't work out. Mm. And I thought to myself, okay, I have a responsibility 
again this is going back to my father mm. and the lesson about process and finishing mm. and so because there wasn't a flight i was to go with a colleague and mm. for her she wouldn't go if there wasn't a flight mm. i didn't have a sense of where this was mm. i didn't even know what the logistics entailed mm. but for me the primary focus was mm. There's a job to be done. Mm. There are people waiting on the other side. Mm. People get to Moyale mm. not on flights mm. many times. Mm. And so we will find a way and we will do mm. it. So I figured out uh, mm. with the help of a friend mm. that you could actually take a lorry mm. and they have to go in convoy mm. from Isili. So you mm. leave at about four or five mm. and then you drive all the way to Isiolo. So mm. you get there a bit late, like 11. Mm. And then you stay up, drink tea, coffee, whatever, mm. and then proceed now in convoy mm. from there to Marsabit, mm. which is a really was a 12 hour journey. Mm. And you had to go with police escort. Mm. And then another 12 hours mm. to Moyale. Mm -hmm. But it was quite, it was an adventure. Mm. It was quite an experience. Mm. And I, I think it's in the middle of the road. I'm like, okay. Oh, I, I still, I don't think I fully understood the sense of it. Mm. Um, I, I got there and I was really shocked that there are people in this country that lived that far that far mm. and even in in, under way. such circumstances. Mm. But so it was an opportunity to I would sleep over on the Ethiopian side mm. cross and back. cross back. Mm. And that was just amazing. Did my thing. Mm. I came back and I really appreciated mm. that kind of travel, that kind of... Mm. Mm. Yeah, and so I got the opportunity because of, I think, what they read out of that situation was dedication. Yeah. And so I got a promotion. Mm. And eventually my boss left, so I became the program, the program officer. officer. Yes, and yeah. now I was in charge of... Of the entire Futures program. Entire Futures program. I want to hear about what that looked like at that yeah. leadership level, but also yeah. what Futures is, you yes. know? So you've been mentioning Futures. Yeah. And 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 um, yeah. that uh, concept I want to hear about yeah, will be will be right back. Mm -hmm.